Hey everyone, welcome to part 6 of my Godot beginner tutorial series where we are building a endless runner game in Godot engine. So guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, uh, please do subscribe now and hit that notification bell to get updates in future. So let's uh, talk about uh, finite state machines. I did say in the previous tutorial, I don't know if we'll be covering it in this series because it is a beginner series and finite state machines can seem a little more complicated but since we've only got basically three states which our player can be in be in and that's a run jump and idle state this uh, state machine should be quite simple to construct and then I'm just going to show you why it's actually beneficial to have state machines over having rigid scripts uh, where we actually do input checks and all these animations and weird things so it's just going to simplify this actually in the end and uh, we don't need this can jump anymore so it won't be as rigid as it is now so let's uh, jump into this let's uh, see how we can change this into a state machine so the first thing you want to do is you want to just define states so what we'll do is we'll use uh, enumerators for this and what i'll do is i'll get rid of this can jump for now because we're not going to be using it anymore and uh, what we want to do is we want to call enum, which is an enumerator. And we are going to define three states. One is jump, one is run, and one is idle. Those are the three states we're going to allow our player to be in. And uh, next what we want to do is we just want to start with an initial state. So we'll create a state variable and we'll start with run as our state and that actually means we can get rid of this ready because we're not going to set it uh, immediately when we run our game we're going to set it within our state so i'm going to just call pass or actually let's get rid of ready completely now because we won't be needing it until we start adding other features so what will change basically is we're going to move all this logic out into our states and that's going to simplify our code uh, quite a bit. So here's the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, just match some states within our physics process. We will be applying these two uh, still. So we're not going to be moving them inside of our state. We'll be applying them no matter what, whether we're jumping, running, or whatever. So that's our default state. So what we'll do is we'll just match our state over here. And then we'll check for the run. So if now I'll just do pass. And for jump, we will do a bunch of stuff as well. And then for idle, I'm just going to pass on our as well. All right, so what we do in jump is, okay, so the first thing is we do all of this in uh, our jump. So one, we zero out the velocity. So let's bring that over. Then the next thing we do is we apply this jump velocity. And we also play our animation. So now you can see that all our logic in terms of jumping is now moving into our jump state instead of this arbitrary weird way of doing things and uh, we're going to remove this and we're going to simplify our input event quite a bit so what we'll do is we'll just say uh, if our state is in the run state and that means our player is on the ground so it has to be in the run state for us to be able to press the button and then once we have pressed that button we are obviously in the jump state so we're setting the state to jump uh, just to clean that up just remove these extra lines and then we know when we've gotten into the body entered state we are basically running so the animation player here we need to put into run over there and then we will just set our state equal to run and then when we exit the body we're going to just simply set our state to jump because we know 
that we are jumping. Okay, so let's just clean this up a little bit and just to show you that this still works, I'm going to uh, run the game. So run it and we can jump. But uh, there is still an issue here, obviously, because we are just carrying on jumping forever now. <laughs> so we need to set some type of state as well when we've jumped. So after this jump, we're going to set our state to idle because we're only going to jump for that instance. And then we're going to move into an idle state while we wait for our player to come back down to the ground. So let's play and let's see if we can now jump as usual so we can so that has fixed the jump so now you see how we structured it in a way where we can actually now understand our logic a lot better so that's the power of state machines and that's one of the big advantages of it is to simplify the way your code works so basically it's just switching between states and understanding how they fit together and how they transition between states and that's the most complicated part of it but actually it's not so difficult when you just look at this very basic example so now i just want to show you why this is beneficial and uh, apart from it just being simpler code to use uh, we can also then start using this as um, a boilerplate to help us train ai for our game because we can now abstract our input away from actually using an input handler and we could simulate input by changing states. So how we would do that, let's uh, just create an example here, is if we went into our scenes and we go into our players and we open player.tscn and we're just going to add a timer here. So I'm gonna add a child node and it's a timer and in the timer, we'll just set this to auto start. And then on the node, we'll connect the timeout signal. And I've got this timeout signal here. And what we'll do is we'll select a random state to transition to every one second. So what we need to do is we just need to create a way of just uh, choosing between the different states. So I'm just going to create a function called get random uh, state and we'll just have a list of states let's just call it state list so this is essentially an array so we're just going to call randomize to create a seed for the randomness and then state list dot uh, shuffle is what we'll call to just shuffle it and then we'll return the first item in our array we do that with dot front Okay, then what we can do is we can now use this in our on timer out. So we can say state equals get random state. And then we'll pass it the list of our states. So that's jump, idle, and run. Save that off, off and let's run this now and let's not press any input and you'll see what happens. So there's a jump, a run, a jump, couple of jumps so you can see in this way we can simulate input uh, within our game and then once we actually start implementing let's say for example artificial intelligence uh, maybe with a genetic algorithm or something we could train our uh, genetic algorithm to press these inputs uh, via our state and then we can measure an outcome of our game's performance or our AI's performance so guys, uh, basically that's the end of this uh, tutorial. Um, I hope you've liked it. Uh, so if you did, please do like below and comment below as well if you have any questions. And then I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Cheers.